this is my new series mushroom thoughts so i'm gonna be posting all the things i learned going down the rabbit hole because they really helped my life and they've helped me so much i literally will record everything that i learn and apply the knowledge knowledge that i learned from tripping to my actual life it has helped me so much with my social anxiety and what i learned on that trip from my social anxiety i'll just throw this in there um they can't help it people are staring at you so much because they can't help it because i would just like walk down the street and i wouldn't be particularly doing anything like I mean, obviously, if you, like, put yourself together and you look a certain way, it's no secret that eyes are going to be on you more. But I would just still get a lot of anxiety and stuff about things and just being stared at on the street and just, like, being randomly approached by men and stuff like that. But, like, what really helped me on my trip was it's almost like they're seeing an angel in the flesh. I was, like, looking at this guy and he was just, like, looking at me. He was just, like... I just had that thought it's like almost like they're seeing an angel in the flesh and if you really think about it if you actually like they say like angels will come in the form of little dogs do not little dogs but dogs like they'll be your dogs and stuff like that but you'll have such a deep bond and connections with them but they say that angels adopt the form that's going to be most not shocking for the human eye so it's like you're giving them a face in a way so if you really think about it if you saw an angel in the flesh in its actual form whatever that looks like it might be super scary or doesn't matter how it looks you just wouldn't be able to look away so literally they could be staring at you because you're ugly they could be staring at you because you got poop on your pants you know what i mean of course but if you adopt these beliefs then like when it's happening you're not really thinking too much about it you're not thinking too deep into it and you're not giving yourself anxiety i started doing mushrooms in 2021 as a more permanent solution to my depression and it's really helped a lot i started tripping because there's not really like a lot of long-term research done on antidepressants and how they affect the brain whereas mushrooms are a more permanent solution to your depression it really helps you from tripping you get an afterglow period after tripping like a three-day period where you're just feeling like beyonce just really good but also what really helps you is your memory of the trip so recording things what mushrooms basically do is enhance your perception so it gives you a bird's eye view and it helps you see your blind spots things that you didn't really realize before it's more of an intelligence kind of drug this is not this it's not like weed or anything like that this is something that's good to do every now and then to check in with your spirit and stuff like that it basically enhances all the senses all the five senses so if you're eating processed foods you really can taste how artificial and not organic it is that you just will be like like no thanks i know in the movies they like to make it seem like well here we go yeah that's what my friends say too well here we go oh dude i think i can feel it too i'm getting the context high The visual effects from shrooms is more like, like think about when you're about to cry and your eyes are watering and how everything looks when your eyes are watering. That's kind of what the visual effects of being on shrooms looks like. It essentially takes your real world filter off. You know those people that you can only tolerate in doses? It takes your filter off so you're not going to be able to tolerate 
anything. Like you will physically be repulsed and not want to be by them. And every trip is different. Your environment affects how your trip goes. So don't be doing them at a party because then you're going to be feeling how shady and miserable everyone really is. If you're tripping for the first time, I recommend you do it in a safe space. Make sure it's clean because everything around us has energy attached to it. So you don't want to be feeling all of that because you literally will feel the most. On my second trip, it was completely different to my first and it really helped me with my social anxiety, what I learned on that trip. But I remember I really was able to tap into my besties emotions and stuff like that and i was like you know people can tell you their stories they can tell you about their lives and you can be empathetic but you're never gonna be able to really feel it in first person you think you understand but you don't really actually understand and when i tripped that time i was like oh my god it literally puts you in first person perspective mode it's like literally reclining back into your body and just like your perception is just open so this is what i learned from my last trip so what is going to give you the most happiness in your life is by focusing on the quality of your life experiences and your relationships when you die and you're on your deathbed you're not going to be thinking about the money you spent you're not going to be thinking how much time you're trying to make this money you're just going to have your memories and experiences you are a human being you are soul in a meat sack <laughs> having a human experience so you're not going to be able to really take any of the material things with you just your memories so from time to time you might feel like why me why am i so familiar with the emotion of pain but you need to understand that this is not easy for anyone it's not easy for anyone life is not easy for anyone <laughs> i mean does it get easier yes but ultimately it's just not the vibe it's really about how you're able to weather the storm because there's always going to be ebbs and flows with money relationships your health but it's all about how you're able to weather the storm and how nice you are to yourself on your way through these things have a little bit of self-compassion when you're tripping you go from feeling really sad to feeling really happy for no reason sometimes you're just happy because you finally made it in life and then other times you're super sad because it's like why you had to go through that it's such a healing thing it really accelerates like if you're going through a heartbreak too let's trip a little bit let's accelerate the healing process and stuff like that so that's something to note don't be wearing a full face of makeup because you're going to be sobbing more than likely if you knew that you were going to be the person in your life to treat you the best do the best for you and you saw someone else focusing all their time energy and attention on you you wouldn't necessarily be attracted to them you're attracted to people who love themselves people who respect themselves people who have boundaries people are drawn to people who are positive because it breeds success and achievement they are drawn to a positive influence so it's like you think you want someone to give their heart to you in theory that'd be nice you're sitting there you're lonely you're like where's my man where's my girl you think you want someone to give their whole heart to you but that's not what you really want that's actually quite cringe seeing someone focus all their time and energy on you and not focusing them on themselves it's like think about it this way it's like when a guy sees a girl that isn't the most conventionally attractive not necessarily his type but she has confidence and she's walking into the room and she expects every good thing to come in her life and most people are gonna wonder like wait why does this girl who i don't think is beautiful why does she have such a high opinion of herself and why is she so confident that in itself is personal magnetism you're drawing them in and they don't even realize it but like they're attracted to that person because they kind of want to figure out why she likes herself so much what's so good about her i've got to find out what's her name whereas she wasn't his type before but now she's got his number successful relationships involve two people that are whole with themselves 
Think about a heart, right? A heart. It's not cracked in two and then it's one piece to another. You're complete. No, it's two separate hearts that are complete on their own. And these two people come together and there's bliss. You know, you don't have codependency issues. You're responsible for your happiness. You're the only one who's responsible for your happiness. Your happiness does not lie in the hands of a boy or a girl or a job. You are the one that's responsible for your happiness. Also, I want you to know that when you think about things, you wouldn't be able to think about those things if you weren't existing and living in a parallel reality with that thing. So you couldn't reach for the thought if it wasn't already created. So you might be sitting here thinking, how am I gonna do it? How am I gonna get there? But literally the fact that you can even think about getting there is the indicator that there's another reality open where you are living that life. Because if you really think about it, there's certain things that you can't even perceive. And I know, I know this might be a little bit advanced for you guys, but I feel like the people who watch me are high level thinkers and really intelligent, so follow my drift if you can. The concept that you need to understand and the concept that has really helped me when I want anything is it's already done. You really need to get that in your brain because if you can solidify that belief in your brain then you're not necessarily trying wanting trying to make things happen things are meant to be easy for you so by adopting the belief that it's already done then all the components in your physical reality can show up to make this a reality if that makes sense so you stop thinking about it you assume that you already have it, and now you get a call that gets you that job that you wanted or someone reaches out or something happens that's typically how it works so adopt that belief and i know a lot of people are not good at visualization but you're a lot better than you think you are. You're just trying too hard. If you feel like you struggle with visualizing, you want to create a mental picture that can be projected out into reality. Think of your mind as like a photocopy machine and what's being seen in here, if you think about it for long enough, will be projected out there. So for example, right, I have got the dog itch. I want a dog so bad. And so I was like, I was like, Angel show me my dog in my dream and it was like a beautiful chocolate pot brown Australian Shepherd so I started learning everything I could about that dog and stuff like that I was just like on YouTube all day looking at that dog and literally on my long walk an Australian Shepherd walked up to me and it hit me and I was just like wait no the attraction process starts by softly observing something so like me looking at this sparkling water or this protein if i look at this long enough i might walk outside and a bus might pass by and there might be an ad for this on it that's how you know this is real literally i was just so focused on it so much that one literally came up to me in real life and what are the odds you're walking around but this is what i'm saying like don't delude yourself. This stuff is all real, but you found me, so you know. But what you really want is the mental picture created. If you feel like you struggle with visualizing, tell yourself a story like this. I want you right now to think of a pink elephant kissing a purple elephant in the middle of Chicago riding a boat. I literally just painted a visual image in your head so random <laughs> but um yeah it's literally that easy start telling yourself a story more than often you need to be telling yourself how you want things to go versus how they have been going and that's the cheat code to not getting stuck in life like that's something i've always told myself i've never been a bitch to get stuck oh hell no nah. i'm a winner and so are you also, I want you to take the time to learn how to utilize your technology. A lot of us have these iPhones, these MacBooks, and we aren't using our technology to the fullest of our capabilities. And your life could be a lot easier if you just had the knowledge of how to use your technology better. And also, this is for my first 
ever no this is from a trip like where i realized i was like wait the real scam is you believing it a lot of people across the world have been taught to hate their bodies feel like they're not perfect in their bodies if everyone was fat it would be the normal if everyone had like a big gold that would be the normal so it's like you don't actually hate your body you've just been taught to hate your body because of what society says how people treat you the message the world sends you your body is perfect it truly is and what i learned is we choose our bodies before we incarnate we choose the perfect parents for the perfect lessons and i know that's hard to hear but no matter how crazy our parents are they provided the perfect lessons for our soul's elevation think about rags to riches stories a lot of people who grew up in poverty they'll do anything to have money to never feel the way they felt when they were broke i would look at your trauma your struggles your shitty parents i would look at all of that as adequate contrast to skyrocket you to success if you really think about it you wouldn't want for certain things if things weren't good if you weren't liking the things that were happening you wouldn't even have that seed planted in your head for better if sh things weren't crappy other thing we apparently like i thought this was so fascinating we apparently choose our birth names and our birth names are connected to our life purposes and i know mine's is definitely connected to my life purpose for sure um it says a lot about me so if you're watching this video chances are you're more than likely a high level thinker you're super smart you're super intelligent and you typically get the things that you want in your life so i find that what we have to do what you and me what we gotta do is we gotta learn to relax and just be because things always have a way of working themselves out if you didn't notice if you know you always get what you want, why are you worried? Why are you stressed? If you know things always work out for you, why are you stressing out? And that's the solution. The solution is to find ways to distract yourself. Find ways to not focus on what's not happening for you so that the things that you want to happen for you can just come on in. That's the problem with a lot of people. Y'all don't allow yourselves the space to dream big or want more for yourself. And therefore, it just never happens. You're just like, well, no one in my family was ever good. No one in my family ever had money. No one is blah, 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 blah. You get where I'm going with this. But um, that's your problem you're not dreaming big enough for yourself and you need to be also i feel like the world likes to scam women into thinking that they peak at 25 and then they're done they're not good but that's the biggest scam invented to man it's like you hit 27 and you're just like let me start lying about my age but if you really think about it if you are someone who gets better with time if you look back and it's been a progression of greatness we know you're just getting started that's what we know it's the truth so that's a big scam too you get better with age and with time you become more confident more self-assured you get more wisdom there's a certain amount of wisdom that comes with being on the planet for a lot longer even though people in their older ages they might not be as smart as you in your 20s but they've been on the planet a lot longer and there's wisdom that comes with that that you don't get because you haven't been alive as long so another golden rule i live by is you've done nothing wrong so you're sitting there is something traumatic has happened and you're like where did i go wrong you didn't do anything wrong and i find what a lot of people like to do is they like to dip in the past and they're like maybe if i didn't spend all that money on that bag i wouldn't be broke right now maybe if i didn't break up with him i would be you know good right now maybe if i didn't curse my sugar daddy out i'd be paid right now <laughs> but you a lot of you neglect to remember how you were feeling in that day and time 
you were depressed, you were eating a lot, you weren't feeling good. So you're in the future looking back and you're like, I went wrong, I should have been smarter, I should have did this, I should have did that. That talk is not helping you whatsoever. You have to have self-compassion for yourself in these times. Like, yeah, I wish I started YouTube a lot sooner. I wish I did a lot of things a lot sooner, but no, you have to understand that your life is happening in perfect timing. There are things that you don't really see and you can't really see because you don't have a bird's eye view and stuff like that, but things are working out for you. The invisible forces are like moving things around so that you're good. That's what you gotta understand. So you've done nothing wrong. You've done nothing wrong. How the hell are you gonna get smarter? How are you gonna get the wisdom if you don't get the trauma? And I know it's unfortunate, but like getting traumatized, a lot of us unfortunately don't make it, but you get a lot of wisdom from trauma. That's how some people are so smart. Put the black mirror down. Put it down. <laughs> what I find is a lot of people are obsessed with their black mirrors, their phones. And I feel like when you go through any type of a negative discourse online, it can feel really real and it can really affect you. But if you put the black mirror down, then you realize that it's not actually real. Most people are very influenced by their phones and I get it, it's like our arms, like imagine not having your phone in your hand, it's like a mini heart attack, you're like, hold on, where is it? But um, you need to, Particularly if your job is social media, you need to be taking social media detoxes. This just goes for anyone in general. Don't let your phones get you in your feelings. A lot of you guys are so emotional. You're looking down at the phone, you're crying, you're sad, you're envious, you're feeling all these emotions. Scrolling social media and intaking content daily, which is what most of us do, it's like playing Russian roulette with your emotions. So you need to find time to disconnect, unplug. You're giving all this time and energy to everyone else but yourself. You're not really sitting around and putting that mental picture in your head of what you want. Now, I'm not saying you can't use social media for that. I mean, it's kind of inevitable that all of us are on it in a way, but if you're gonna be on it, you need to use it very strategically. You need to be putting things at the forefront of your face and mind that are gonna help you and motivate you. A lot of people have no news. A lot of people have no souls. A lot of people are so fake and it's very rare to meet a real one. So you really need to cherish those relationships that you have when they show up in your life. A lot of people are just miserable and they wanna make other people feel as miserable as they are. So like, imagine like a crappy neighbor situation. Like, I don't know if you've ever had one, but I did. I manifested my dream apartment in Chicago. It was everything I wanted. I put the visualization on, I had the picture as my phone screensaver. That's a really good way to manifest, by the way. You just think about what you're seeing every day. But um, I literally got my perfect apartment and I had the most horrible neighbor ever, ever. And it was completely racially motivated. And I was just like, oh my God, it's 2019 and what is this? But it was the older lady, she was Korean and she was just doing the most, literally doing the most. That apartment was so horrible. It got so chaotic. Pipes were bursting, towels were lifting, there was no maintenance, pots were banging on the wall by this crazy bitch. Why is she doing it again? Oh my god. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Alright, let's complain. <laughs> and and you're sitting there like, what did she do? What did she do? Literally nothing. Literally nothing. My life was so chaotic at the time and I couldn't help but think like, what is going on? Like, how did I get my perfect dream apartment? And all of this is happening. And so like at the time, like angel numbers would really help me. Um, I was very tuned in to the signs and stuff like that. I mean, I still am, but I learned to 
just know that they're there for a reason. But I remember seeing like this one number that was like, if you've got a material possession in your life and you want to get rid of it, it would be a lot easier to let go of it. I'm like, oh, are they talking about the apartment? And so I asked for a sign and I was on the sun deck and literally a bus drives by and the words are home has the new address and then a dragonfly like flies down next to me and dragonflies are symbolic of I forgot but I'm gonna put it in here <laughs> there's something in your life that you need to look at from a different perspective or with a new fresh set of eyes so everything in your life has to be destroyed before you go to another level so destruction is not necessarily a bad thing a lot of times it represents rebirth it represents being able to start over again to be exactly who you want to be to build from the ground up and to um, create your ideal life so walk into this period of transformation boldly like seasons change you're not gonna stay down for long trust me you're not gonna stay down for long you're not gonna stay broke for long you're not gonna stay sick for long you're not gonna stay lonely for long it's gonna be okay okay visualize the best case scenarios and know that your life is gonna get better because it will pay attention to the signs when things are really chaotic in your life sometimes it's just redirection for your highest good because when i look back on it on retrospect I'm happy she did all that in a way I'm happy she got me out of Chicago and to New York because COVID happened and I would have been there alone and no friends no company no nothing so when life gets really chaotic in an unusual way pay attention to the signs so another golden rule so give yourself permission to dislike things if you are a spiritual person and you've dived into these books and stuff like that, a common theme that a lot of these spiritual teachers will tell you, there's a lot of misinformation out there by the way, but a common theme is focus on the positive aspects and it's science, it's right, you can test it out yourself, have a happy day, focus on the good and the good gets better, it's just the truth and you can test this out. There's been days where I was just in a good mood and I was just feeling so good and then something else happened that was really good you find five dollars you get a free meal you skip the line it's a good day but it's in response to your positive vibration it's like the universe being like here's some chipotle for free <laughs> you're in alignment here's five dollars on the ground you're abundant give yourself permission to just like a lot of people like to just not think about the negative and just only think about the positive which is a great technique it's called pivoting and pivoting is a great way to get your thoughts off of like this bad thing happened to me well maybe this bad thing happened to me so i could have more time in the day for this blah 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 it's all about perspective and nothing is what i've learned is nothing is necessarily good or bad it's completely neutral and it's how you see it it's what you the energy you put on it so when you feel negative about something it's important to have gratitude it is so important to have gratitude but be grateful for the things that you actually like in your life don't set out to start a gratitude thing because you're trying to make things happen it is important to have gratitude for the things you actually like in life but if you're not grateful for something just don't care about it don't put your attention on it you don't have to be you are not going to be the most positive all the time you're going to feel negative and that's what duality is so allow yourself to dislike things when you allow yourself to dislike things you're kind of giving yourself freedom in the way you're letting go of resistance that's stopping you from getting what you want so test it out give yourself permission to dislike something and you'll notice you'll feel a lot lighter so i'll test it out for you right now i can't stand these losers these rats in the comments always talking about me you watch my videos and you talking about me i'm not talking about you <sighs> see that made me feel so good loose yeah that made me feel so good but this is what you need to do that gives you that gives you freedom versus just bottling up bottling it up and thinking like oh i've gotta like this i've gotta like the state i live in i've gotta like my relationship because i mean 
everyone would love to have the relationship that I'm in. He's so good to me, like, but you know, I gotta be positive about it. No, you don't. If you don't like your relationship, if you don't like the state you live in, this is a valid contrast for you and you are setting yourself free by allowing yourself to dislike things. So the reality of the world is you've gotta have your poker face on. If you've got a great looking exterior, chances are life is gonna be pretty smooth sailing for you. I'm not saying beautiful people don't go through things, because you do, you go through a lot. Life is not easy for anyone and there's no manual on how to do this. But systemically, if you are ugly and fat, you're more likely to go through a lot of contrasts in life because you're not fitting into the narrative of what people think is successful and beautiful. And you know, all of that aside, society has its stupid ass rules. <laughs> What is your dream body look like? What is your goal? What makes you happy? Because literally at the end of the day, when you're on that deathbed, that's all that mattered. That's literally all that mattered when you get to the end of your life. Focus on what makes you happy. If it's being thick and luscious, do that. If it's being skinny, do that you know and just because you want to be skinny and pretty even though you like being thick it doesn't mean that you're being a sellout to yourself you are just putting on a different hat in life we all do that we put different hats on for different things and stuff like that that's just what you gotta do sometimes it's not necessarily getting your high-rise apartment the dog your lover or your dream body per se that will give you happiness all those things will take a brick out of your backpack take the stress out of your life in a way all of a sudden you can fit into any clothes but it's really the quality of your life experiences and relationships that's going to give you happiness because there's a lot of people in these high-rise apartments that are skinny and pretty that are so unhappy you might be sitting there looking at that skinny pretty girl thinking she has it so good well guess what she's crying about something and that fat girl who wants to be skinny so bad thinking that it's gonna solve all her life problems it's not you're just taking a brick out of your backpack stress out of your backpack but now you got to deal with jealousy and envy and other things and stuff and so on and so forth human beings are creatures that are designed to accomplish goals so you're never gonna get it done you're always gonna be wanting for something better Better, something more exciting what I will continue to preach is you've got to learn to be okay with your body and where it's at because truly I've been there hating your body doesn't do any good unless you're using it to motivate you don't be sitting here a victim complaining about your body and then doing nothing what is that you're living in purgatory. No, let's get out of purgatory. Let's make it happen. This is what I love about tripping and I just have this realization every time. It'll be different, like sometimes, you, like you'll have like a few weeks. I was crying for like eight hours one time and I was trying to do everything to feel better. I literally went to the gym. I was like, oh, workout makes me feel better. Crying on the treadmill and then it was cold outside and then I went outside, it was just too cold. I was crying outside and like literally but I felt so great the next day I had that afterglow I just felt like a very healing process so it's really different each and every time but what I always learn and love about doing shrooms every time is like I always realize that there's so much beauty in the world and why are we not talking about it why are we talking about the beauty in the world I know there's a lot of negativity in the world as well but I feel like a lot of people are just not us are more so focused on negativity and I understand negativity does better in media the numbers go up in media people are more tuned into divorces than they are weddings a wedding reminds them of what they don't have but a divorce it's like oh I knew love was too good to be true kind of thing so there is so much beauty in the world life is beautiful like if you are depressed just literally keep going keep going because things do get better and it's like okay when I was 15 everything that I wanted to come true literally came true and it's still happening it's literally still happening so 
you can do anything you can get anything literally you just need to allow yourself the space to dream big and don't doubt yourself stop shooting yourself down for the things that you want because that's y'all's problem so you be shooting yourself down stop doing that <laughs> But yeah, so when things are really good, take time to appreciate it. When things are boring and the routine is just boring and you just like, I'm so bored. Like I wish I had more excitement in my life. Take time to appreciate it because people I find are so addicted to toxicity and drama and negativity. They like fighting Aries. <laughs> But you don't need to have your back against the wall. You don't need to be fired up about something to feel like you're living life. I love the routine. I'm a fixed side and when it's good, it is good. It might be boring, but at least it's not chaotic. So when things are good, make sure you're saying it out loud. Make sure you're appreciating the moment. I'm appreciating this moment in time. And that's a little cheat code there for you. You're segment intending when you do that so that the moment in time gets better. Say it out loud so you can create more of it. Wow, today has been such a good day. That's another cheat code too. I love waking up and being like, oh my God, today was such a good day. I like literally getting out the bed. It's called segment intending and you're deliberately creating your reality. It's time to start living life on purpose instead of letting life happen to you. You're doing the best you can every day. You really do. You, even if you got up today and you took a shower and that's all you did, or even if you didn't take a shower, <laughs> take that damn shower, stinky. Take that damn shower, stink. Um, but no, you're doing the best you can every day, truly. I wake up every day and I put my best foot forward. I am doing my best at life every single day. So it's so important to have compassion for yourself. There really is no manual on this and we're all just figuring it out as we go. We're all just big ass kids who forgot to be kids because like life just like the bills, the rent, the heartbreak, blah, blah, blah. But no, you're trying the best you can. And I find when you're highly successful and highly intelligent, you feel like you're doing the most, but then you're not doing enough as well. And I'm here to tell you, you're doing more than enough. You truly are. You just feel like you're not because everyone is only posting their accomplishments and highlight reels. They're not posting their struggles. And you're sitting on the toilet watching someone that just bought their house and you're like in a little shitty apartment you see it's not that you're dumb it's not that you're not successful it's not that something is wrong with you it's just you're on your own timeline and that's okay that's okay you're right where you need to be and you're right on time you need to understand that just because someone did it faster or someone did it better doesn't mean that you can't you need to have self-compassion for yourself you can't be calling yourself dumb you can't be calling yourself stupid because what does that achieve not a goddamn thing i need to get it together i need to do better what does that actually achieve nothing stop making yourself feel bad like the world already makes us feel like shit for being who we are wearing our hair a certain way having a little bit more meat on our bodies or whatever oh the least you could do is be nice to yourself at least be the one person that's gonna be nice to you love you guys